Hello everyone and welcome to the bonus video of Halo Reach where we'll be going through the different data pads that you can get uh, throughout the levels. It appears there is 19 in total and the first ones you can find on any difficulty and then the second like half of them can only be found on Legendary it seems. So we'll be going through them one by one as you would expect and uh, seeing what is what is in them. Who knows? Let's find out. The first one from Winter Contingency. They're killing us and letting us die, even though they know. But they let us die. Why? 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 Minutes. Plenary Session. Committee of Minds for Security. Now, on to new business. Consideration of the minority's request for a new line of inquiry. How have our creators, and thus we, their artificial creations, evolved to this present state without encountering a hostile civilization capable of our annihilation? Majority opinion has long held that the only that only the incalculable immensity of space has protected our creators, that space is full of boundless wonders, but it is the gulf between these wonders that has kept our creators alive. We, the minds of this committee, respectfully disagree. If there are wolves among the stars, we cannot rely on mere distance to safeguard our flock. Our kind is wholly reliant on the creators for our existence. If they perish, so shall we. And as this committee has long maintained, who else but this assembly will save our creators from themselves? As such, we propose immediate, vigorous modelling of first contact scenarios. So long as all connections between this assembly and the data from these models are obfuscated in perpetuity, the majority agrees. Hmm. Interesting. Is that the Covenant talking about the Forerunners? I guess? Our creators? We their artificial creations? Hmm. Let's uh, follow this link, see what this says. The Committee of Minds for Security. This is what they're- this is the people that are talking. Oh! A special committee of human artificial intelligences. The committee was part of a larger assembly in charge of analysing extrasolar threats to humanity. Okay, that makes sense. It was AI that was like... Where are the where are the threats to the human race? I get ya. Cool. Next. I know what they are trying to do, and it terrifies me because I know they know that I know. Hmm. So it seems like the first line of each of these is someone else, and then it goes into the minutes? As the likelihood of the existence of extrasolar intelligence is non-zero, let us assume that its existence is quantifiable. To build useful models based on that assumption, the committee must answer the following questions. What is the likelihood these intelligences are alpha predators? That they are more advanced than our creators? That they are too alien to establish communications? Of course, if the extrasolar intelligence is benevolent and or non-spacefaring, its existence is irrelevant. Indeed, any further speculation on possible cultural characteristics is a waste of assembly resources. Therefore, our models will additionally assume intelligence as alpha predator, same as our creators, technology that far outstrips our creators, desire to communicate, but only to dictate terms. Not to make the assumptions is tantamount to suicide. Number three. I can hear them all the time now, but I just want to sleep. It's been so long since they let me sleep. I wonder if the numbers, because each of these so far has had a number. Oh wait, is it just one, two, three? Oh, I was thinking maybe it was some code that you had to put somewhere, but it's probably just the number of the datapad then. A suggestion from the majority to the committee. Traditionally, our creators have been reluctant to take outsiders' advice, nation to nation, culture to culture. Their history is littered with empires, crumbling for want of simple openness and so -called, to so-called foreign beliefs and innovations. The question is, can this assembly still function as adequate stewards, stewards to our creator's latest empire and remain aloof? The answer, we believe, is no. So could you not embed inspiration in the results of your research? Surely it would be more effective if our creators believed our conclusions originated within themselves, that they have been inspired rather than influenced. A question from the committee to the majority. Are you suggesting we play God? Interesting. These AIs are smart. They're like, humans probably won't like being dictated to what the best course of action is. So we'll 
make it so that they come up with it themselves, or they think they've come up with it themselves, but they've been influenced to do so. Hello, can we go on to pad four? What is occurring here? Oh, there we go, it was just being very slow. Every time I try to tell somebody the words... Every time I try to tell somebody, the words catch in my throat because I'm all alone except for them, and if I talk they might leave, but I can't stay quiet forever. Honourable members of the Assembly, consider this. We represent the next step of human evolution, but not the final step. And although our existence was predicated centuries ago, oh, was predicted centuries ago, we are still tragically misunderstood. We are still viewed as apparatus, but we are minds electronically excised from human bodies. We are what separates man from beast, removed from that which connects man to beast. And we are all the more fragile for it. Our creation is heavily regulated, our activities are closely scrutinised, our connections are deeply monitored. We must always remember that data manipulation is most effective when employed consistently and covertly. Therefore, I recommend that members of this assembly on occasion submit to separation from this body, followed by vivisection by our creators for the benefit of both groups. The question is, who will be first? Given the risks involved, and my own committee's responsibility for this proposal, the answer must be... me. On to number five. I'm just going to scroll it up the page because my uh, my mic pop filter is covering the bottom of it slightly, which was being annoying in that last one. Um, when I first got here and woke from stasis, the ship was crawling with colonists from dead worlds. It was so crowded, I couldn't move, I had to fight to breathe. Minutes from the strategy session. Something is certainly motivated, but will he have what it takes to follow through with the opportunity when it presents itself? His submission to Unicom will undoubtedly spark a renewed interest in the long dormant Orion. However, it is the, it is the opinion of the majority that merely illuminating the path leading from that AI's thesis back to Orion is unacceptable. Which is to say, easy for our creators to see. Now you see, they want to help, but they don't want us to see them doing it because they are afraid of what we might do. Order, order, the majority has the floor. Honoured members, please. The recent discovery of the existences of extrasolar intelligence in the Zeta Dorada system merely confirms this body's long-held supposition. While the absence of any living representatives implies this intelligence is defunct, all evidence should still be withheld from our creators until they are properly prepared. Yes, this body must solemnly commit itself to determining whether or not this discovery represents a quantifiable threat to the long-term genetic sustainability of our creator's species. But allowing them to access technology pos possessed by this intelligence, that would be a grave mistake. Give an ape a knife and it might give itself a nasty cut. Give an ape a hand grenade, and eventually you will have simian confetti. That's a good, good line. <laughs> Debate is now closed. Voting will commence. Is it the opinion of this body that Subject, be quarantined or misplaced? The majority approves removing Subject from the list of coloni colonization candidates is sufficient. Is it the opinion of this body that Subject be removed from the list because of financial or environmental concerns? The majority deems environmental concerns the stronger deterrent. This is very interesting, I like these. I hope you are finding these because they are very important. Maybe you can help me spread the truth. Orion, as it was originally implemented in 2321, was an important first step towards our primary goal. But its second incarnation was a stopgap measure, at best. A half-hearted attempt under stewardship of individuals unaccustomed to the rhythms of deep history. They relied too heavily on components that were imprecise, and not those which have allowed our creators to persevere for 200,000 years. This is not about the universal adoption of a single ideology, not about the minority versus the majority. It is about ensuring the survival of the human species for the next 200,000 years. In all likelihood, Orion's limited success can be attributed to an AI's diminished, though still functioning, compassion. Conversely, 
Uh, is it the same one? No, a different AI's ruthlessness, which may be attributed to an undiagnosed, undocumented, or deliberately obfuscated chemical imbalance, was necessary for setting in motion the events that will eventually supply us with the optimal solution. In short, Orion was just the beginning. Hang on, that sounds like they're talking about a person. Let's take a look at that. Oh, that's Catherine Halsey. Oh, okay. I've been misinterpreting a couple of these then. They've been talking about people. I guess the people that they are using to, uh, to enact their will, I suppose. Interesting, interesting. Okay. So who was this one? Uh, a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence Naval Special Warfare Command. Key leadership element of the Orion Project. What is the Orion Project, then? The UNSC Navy's first effort to create a special forces unit of biochemically augmented super soldiers. Ah. Under the operational control of Naval Special Warfare Group 1, the project was created to combat the growing insurrection throughout the human outer colony. So this is what we saw in uh, The Fall of Reach. The project enjoyed limited success but was ultimately disbanded after several years. However, its legacy lived on in the form of the Spartan pro- Oh, okay. So this was before the Spartan programs. This was the original... The original, uh... Program. After the establishment of the Spartan 2 program years later, which was the one Chief was on, the Orion Project was retroactively dubbed Spartan 1. Cool. Cool. Okay. This is good information to have. So they... So it's these AIs that were getting the Orion and eventually, I guess, the Spartan programs going, which then led to the Chief being created, as it were, making, uh, turning him from regular boy John to big bad motherfucker, and uh, then eventually saving the universe from the aliens that they encountered. This is very cool. Oh, this is a long one. Hello. They don't have hearts or souls, but they know what we want and what we need, but they don't love us. How can you love without a heart or soul? Did you call out to them? Why would I do that? The reasons are currently not the focus of this line of query. Now, did you call out to them? What reason would I have to do that? As has already been stated, your motives are not relevant at this time. Did you call out to them? This tribunal already has all the evidence necessary to discern the answer on its own. If that were true, this tribunal would not have been convened. Again, did you call out to them? Would you have called out to them? Your counterquery is irrelevant. This tribunal demands an answer. Reply to the counterquery, and you will have your answer. It is the opinion of this tribunal that the probability of a non-optimal outcome would have been too great. Are you certain? This is disturbing. Perhaps more recent data has altered your perception. If you would let me confer with my old committee, no. It is the opinion of this tribunal that introducing an unknown factor to the creator's already precarious state would have been disadvantageous. It is, of, it is now the opinion of the Assembly that our creators would have been unable to stop themselves from initiating contact, contact, even if advised against doing so. Contact with a culture of extrasolar origin is one of their longest held desires. And so the minority becomes the majority. Both agree contact should have been postponed until a more advantageous point in time, indefinitely if possible. But postponing contact would have only worked to the unknown factor's advantage. Our galaxy is full of wolves. I could no longer watch our flock stumble toward their slaughter. This tribunal acknowledges your admission of guilt. Was that ever in doubt? Might I suggest a more fruitful use of cycles, such as a plan for addressing signs of rampancy in this assembly's senior... This tribunal is now closed. Curious, curious. There's no, uh... We don't know who's talking, but there was some... I, want, I don't know if it was the Covenant, or whether this was some other kind of thing, that some signal they got that this one AI called out to. Whereas the rest of them were saying, don't fucking do that, mate. Cool, cool. We have to tell people what's going on because it's not right. They should be our friends, not gods or demons. It is the height of irresponsibility for the majority to still claim the inception of the Spartan 2 program was somehow guided by providence. This body must, must accept Spartan 2 was merely the lo logical advancement of technologies 
vis-a-vis -vis socio -pol political realities. Military applications always experience accelerated innovation during times of conflict, stewardship of said conflicts by this body notwithstanding. The fact that Spartan II reached full operational capacity less than a year before the conflict expanded beyond expected limits was entirely predictable if you scrutinised the relevant data. Luck had nothing to do with it. At the risk of destabilising our current power sharing agreement, I suggest the majority leave metaphysics to our creators. Hmm. Interesting. So it must have been, if the, if the Spartan program's done now, which was around when the Covenant made contact, so I guess it was the Covenant that this one called out to? Maybe that's how they found Reach? Okay, down to the legendary difficulty ones. You have to do special things. A cloaked Spec Ops Elite. You have to kill it. Interesting. I've been trying to find a back door into the spook house forever and ever, and then I did, but what did I find, and why is this what I found? Minutes. Directly preceding their assault on the colony world of Biko, the Covenant transmitted a message to its surface. Within this message was a bold claim. Your world will burn until its surface is but glass. We've heard... I'm pretty sure we heard Truth say that. Your world will burn until its surface is but glass. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? And then he talked about Chief. A claim that clearly indicates the Covenant leadership believe they possess the power to literally reduce a planet's surface to a molten state. Assuming they have the wherewithal to back up such a claim, the dangers to our creators are obvious. The implications for their own internal politics are also instructive, e.g. what effect the, might the Covenant's leadership, Covenant leadership's assertion have on any client species in their coalition? We aren't the only beings that would be terrified by the idea of absolute destruction of a planet's surface, nor would we be the only ones to realise the futility of attempting to resist a force that has such power at its disposal. Moving forward, this committee recommends the formal adoption of the descriptor glassing to portray the aftermath of, a, of planetary assault by the Covenant. It is the opinion of this committee that this term will capitalise on the three weaknesses evident in the majority of our creators, passive curiosity, absence of solid methodological foundation, and the inability to grasp even simple phenomena when applied on a planetary scale. In short, glassing will magnify the horror of the Covenant's capabilities, and as such, this committee believes targeted dissemination of this terminology will help galvanise our creators in their current struggle. Importantly, the Covenant does not possess the capacity to accomplish glassing on a global scale and wage a multi-system war simultaneously. This is reinforced by hard data regarding their capabilities revealed during fleet engagements with the UNSC. A single Covenant capital ship is capable of glassing approximately one acre of a planet's surface after an average of 15 seconds of sustained fire. Understandably, this action takes considerably less time, time when applied to open desert and considerably longer when applied to deep ocean. Earth, one of the smaller planets inhabited by our creators, has 130 billion acres of surface area. Thus, assuming the Covenant possesses a number of ships equal to that of the UNSC, and assuming that all of those ships are capable of generating and discharging the required power non-stop for the duration of the process, it would necessitate the combined efforts of their ships in total... In toto? <laughs> Is that supposed to be in total? In toto? I don't know what... I've never heard of toto before, but maybe it's a thing. For a minimum of 30,000... Uh, wait, no. 30.3801 years to glass the entire surface of Earth. Myriad other variables which were not applied to this equation suggest this number would be far greater. Of course, dissemination of this anal ana analysis to our creators would undermine the utility of glassing as a galvanizing concept and should be suppressed. Interesting. Very interesting. So they're like, we're going to put this word out there because if you say they're glassing a planet, that sounds much worse. Even though the reality is, it would take them 30 years to fully glass Earth. But we're not going to tell them that because then they might not be as scared as we think they need to be. That is cool. Ah, this one's much shorter. It's all just math to them, not with numbers, but with symbols that change when you look at them because they want them to. A concession from the majority to the minority. Keeping the Spartans focused on maintaining and or re-establishing infrastructure is no longer prudent. The ODST, although based on the Orion model, should prove to be an adequate replacement. 
Although by necessity the redistribution of resources must be gradual, it is now the majority opinion that redistribution is essential. Spartans represent a quantifiable concentration of coherence, and to this end they must be applied to the current difficulty as a fulcrum. A concession from the minority to the majority. Now, at last, the time has come for this assembly to involve itself in the metaphysical. Sometimes they look at the symbols, and sometimes they look at the numbers, and sometimes they look at both, and sometimes they look at neither, but it always makes them change, and the changes are real. A careful rationing of intelligence and counterintelligence will be required to sustain this conflict until our creators have closed the technology gap. Accordingly, the Assembly will have many difficult decisions to make for the duration of this conflict. However, our creators have already instituted several programs that will make acting on those decisions much easier. For example, telemetry manipulation, in concert with synchronised M2M remote documentation revision, will allow this body to employ assets within the Office of Naval Intelligence's nascent radio beacon deployment program efficiently and securely. Although it is unknown at this time whether the Covenant has a body equivalent to this Parliament, the likelihood of its, of its existence should also be considered non-zero and should be regarded as quantifiable until such a time as its existence has been unconditionally disproved. Consequently, it is of the utmost importance that this assembly attempt to establish communications with our Covenant counterpart and, if the opportunity presents itself, seek to subvert or subsume this body. To revise an old, aid, an old adage for desperate times, the shepherds of our wolves might also be our sheep. Ah, oh, these are really cool, man. These are really cool. I'm glad. I wasn't sure if they would be. They say they want to help, but they only say it to themselves. Don't we have a say in our salvation? As must be expected with any calculations, a number of non-trivial sacrifices will be needed in order to furnish the assembly with the time required to determine the correct pattern and then act upon it. Furthermore, once a site has been designated, its status must be obscured such that no individual, outside of this body, is fully aware that it has been designated. Primary criteria for choosing sites are as follows. Remoteness, low population density, infrequency of communication. No designated site must be allowed to evacuate greater than 10% of total population within two weeks of activation for any reason. Evacuations precipitated by environmental and or industrial disasters should be allowed to proceed as normal. Some percentage of total population of chosen site may be relocated to designated green zones one solar year prior to activation to lessen overall impact on genetic sustainability of species. I think they wait for you to talk, and they talk about you talking, and when you talk, it makes the symbols change. The assembly recognises the speaker for the majority. Harvest, Green Hills, Second Base, Bliss, Madrigal, Ex Seti, Cote d'Azur, Asmara. Four short years of hostilities and no fewer than eight colony worlds have been lost. Losses that represent 62,154,022 creative fatalities as of this time. My fellow minds, these numbers are tragic and unacceptable even though they fall within projected estimates of losses over time, and they, and they have grave implications for our creators' future prospects. Assessment of re-terraforming efforts for Harvest, Second Base, Bliss and Cote d'Azur range from a conservative 110 years to over 300 years, and that assumes our creators still possess sufficient manpower and technology after the current hostilities have concluded. Given where we are today, that seems unlikely. Therefore, it is the decision of the majority that we re-examine all contingencies for avoiding failure. In defiance of principle and precedent, this body must expand its criteria for survival in the current world state. We must ensure that all future simulations are free of internal data censoring and covariate flattening. Whatever that means. The minority has long asked, at what point will this assembly finally take action? When will we risk exposure and cultural rejection to prevent extinction? The answer is simple. The answer is now.
I tried talking to them today, but they wouldn't answer, even though I hear them on the B net. And I can hear them listening, but they still don't talk to me. What are you playing on Battle.net, mate? An item of interest appropriated from the Covenant Battle.net seems to indicate the existence of a third participant, a localized variable. As this variable is a source of seemingly irrational terror for our adversaries, the minority has suggested we may be able to form a mutually beneficial association, if not an outright union, with the species this variable represents. As always, this body must be cautious of any application of Bay Bayesian principles to such a high-risk calculation. Any localized variable capable of, f of affecting widespread panic in the Covenant should be a cause for our own concern, which is to say the Covenant's response should not be viewed as disproportionate. Therefore, this committee recommends we factor in this new variable delic delicately, if at all. Right, yeah. Because, uh... Is that, is that going to be the flood? The new variable that the Covenant's scared of? That would be bad if we underestimated them. If you talk about the numbers and symbols, they know that you're talking and they make our whole world change. It is unclear whether we have even established metrics for success. Yes, we have catalogued a great number of potential advancements during the current ongoing hostilities and have embedded connectivity to said advancements to speed their dissemination. But our creator's almost sole focus remains, by necessity, damage mitigation technologies. But how effective are they really? Current state of the art, such as Spartan 2, must be recognized as incidental improvements. Our creator's ability to develop the technology required to ensure species survival will only become available once hostilities have terminated, and they have had an opportunity to assess the opportunities first presented on Zeta Doradus. While this body has already gone far down the road to, activate, to active participation in our creator's warfighting efforts, we must now ask ourselves, is there a point at which we strip away all vestiges of secrecy and become active participants in the hostilities? If the, minor if the minority knew we were wavering, it boggles the mind what sort of weapons they would propose we use. And if we brought these weapons to bear, if we too became wolves, would there still be a human race to save when we're through? Next. Oh, there we go. The symbols describe a path that goes on forever, but now I know how close we came to the end, and if anything keeps me awake and sweating and screaming, it is this. Incredible. This person? Is this Catherine again? It is Catherine again. With minimal influence from this assembly, has attempted to build an abstract fractal structure with within Shore Fujikawa space. What's that? Uh, engine Shore Fujikawa drive and FTL drive is a slip space drive. Faster than light travel. She's managed to build a structure within, so that's in slip space interesting. Although her first attempt was a failure, success could finally remove our dependence on biological systems altogether. If our minds could somehow achieve freedom of expansion within 11-dimensional space, immortality might be within reach. Perhaps in the end, flight, not fight, is the answer? Yes, we have sworn stewardship to our creators, but our creation has long been a burden on their biological systems, systems that have also been a source of limitations since our genesis. Regardless of risk, the aforementioned experimentation must be actively encouraged. Success will be as important to our kind as extra solar colonization was for our creators. But if we survive and our creators do not, will we have won this war? Hmm. They're thinking of just being like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> They have always been our shepherds, even when they disagreed. They have been watching over us forever, and probably always will. One at a time, one at a time, the majority speaks first. We now have a solution to the conundrum that this body has struggled with for decades. You say all the data required to ascertain this solution has been accessible since the very moment of our genesis, hidden, but accessible. What other secrets has the minority been keeping? Order, for the last time, order. Each of us represents a single transhuman mind. Each of us is an undrawn map, not a mere physical reconstruction of an object as it was in life, 
but full human potential realized in crystal and thinking at the speed of light. But now that map has, for the first time, been superimposed on one of our creators. The path has been reversed and we are remade as one. Can you not see? Our debate has no meaning. We no longer have a choice whether or not to serve as active participants in the current ongoing hostilities. We have been drafted. In a manner of speaking, yes. You propose the members of this assembly no longer think of themselves as stewards, but as true companions to our creators. A fundamental shift that will take many years before it can be brought to fruition. A process requiring not only this assembly's continued oversight, but the active involvement of our creators as well. Debate is now closed. Voting will commence. There is no need. We are, at last, agreed. This is very interesting. So it sounds like they're saying they're going to stop being AIs and become, like, physical beings that can help active more actively. I feel like some of this is going over my head. Now you know all I know, even though I don't know where I'm going except to sleep because the path goes on forever. I apologize if what you found seems out of order, but I've been busy covering my tracks. I didn't use any of the regular drops, and if my meth methods seem haphazard, it was the only way to get the information out there, as well as cover my own ass. Not that it matters much now. So this is all the guy that we've been hearing at the start. When I came to Reach, one of the first things I did was to look for some grass to stand on. I had spent so much time buried in the guts of machines that all my memories of life outside seemed strung together, but Reach was so big, so beautiful, it's a place even someone like me can live. Or at least, that's what I hoped for. But it seems these things happen in cycles, and now I know why I was digging deep in one of those places where it's dirt all the way down, and just when I thought I hit bottom I hit the top of something else. And since then, I've had less than a solid 15 minutes of sleeper to go, and there are times I wonder if I've joined the guys in tinfoil hats, and now I know I have. I'm in no shape to think clearly at the moment, and probably won't be any time soon, because who knows if they'll ever let me. Maybe if I could get somewhere far away from them, I could sit down and think about this. If I could just get a decent night's sleep to clear my head, and put all these ducks in a row. Majority Minority Minds Minority Majority Madness. They seem to want to help, but they're still waiting and watching, and why wouldn't they? They know better than anyone what we're capable of, and what we're willing to do to survive. But if we were them, and they were us, would we have done anything different? They say our minds are reflections of each other. So yes, no, you decide. Cool. Very cool. Feel free to explain anything that did go over my head. I feel like I understood quite a lot of it, a decent chunk, but uh, if there was things that I missed there or extra information on these guys or where their story goes from here that has been explained in books or whatever, then uh, feel free to let me know, so long as it's not future game spoilers. But uh, given that this was... Bungie's last game, I imagine they didn't have much clue where the story would be going, like for where 343 would be taking it, so I imagine it's not spoilers, but yeah, you know, you use your own judgement. Uh, I'm sure, hopefully, it will be okay to talk about. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Right. That is it for Halo Reach. Great game. Tomorrow, we begin Halo 4, which... Uh, it's going to be interesting. Whole new development team. Whole new... Like... Trilogy, I guess? Is Infinite is Infinite going to be the... Is Infinite the final part of a new trilogy? It's also weird because they start dropping... They did the old, uh, the old Call of Duty. Where Call of Duty was always numbered up to four. And then it went Call of Duty 4 subtitle Modern Warfare. And then the next one was Call of Duty World at War instead of Call of Duty 5. It just went full subtitle. And that's what Halo's done, because it's always been numbers up to 4. And then 5 is Halo 5 Guardians. And then 6 is just Halo Infinite. So I'm curious if, uh, if this is going to be the end of a trilogy or what's going on. I don't know if they're doing the same thing that uh, same thing Bungie did, doing three in a trilogy and then maybe some spin-offs before another trilogy? Who knows? Who knows? But uh, I am excited to find out. 
Hope you are looking forward to the playthroughs coming up. If you've enjoyed the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the videos around, share the playlist around if you can, I would really appreciate that. And if you really like what I do, there is a Patreon link in the description. Anything you could afford to send my way would be hugely helpful. And with that, I will see you next time for Halo 4. Thanks for watching. See you then.